Okay guys, that is a wrap uh, on the day here. I'm gonna give a little preface here to our day's trading. You gotta condense about an hour video of our whole day together. Um, three main trades today for us. Um, all of them positive, uh, all of them good results. Our W trade, we are still in the W trade. Uh, you see my numbers right down here. This is a little bit, uh, uh, it's hard to track because these numbers don't adequately reflect where we are in the trade. You see I've got my profit and loss for the day. I've got my profit and loss for my open positions. I've got my extrinsic value here and then my credit, my total credit that I brought in. And then finally the total capital that's committed to the trade. So I do have $42,000 still committed to the trade. That hasn't changed at all. Brought in $13,000 of credit on this trade have $8,000 of extrinsic value still sitting out there. So this is a little bit of a misnomer here. I am not up $5,500 on this trade. I'm not in a $5,500 overall profit position on this trade because this is showing our profit and loss only for our open positions. Obviously yesterday uh, we rolled out of that call position. So. I need, of, of this $8,000, of this $8,000 uh, of extrinsic value, I need to get back at least $6,000 of that money to put me into the green. So it, we're working in the right direction there. Obviously today was a, a positive move in the right direction. We've got tomorrow coming up to $1,400 of theta just sitting in there tomorrow. Uh, so I think we're moving in the right direction there on W. Hopefully that works out for us. Uh, again, positive day there. Uh, we did our SPX trade and that worked out beautifully. Um, if we look at the SPX trade, let's go to activity tab here and kind of see what we've done. Let's come through our W trades here right up to this trade right here. So you can see this was, uh, uh, obviously today is the fourth of November, this was last night at 7 p.m. This is right when the futures were starting to take off in the election. I did a rare directional trade. I just simply bought, you can see the transaction right there, I purchased one of the 3370 uh, call options on the E-mini futures. Uh, way overpaid for it. Way, I mean, the volatility was so high, IV was so high, it was ridiculously expensive, paid 41 uh, dollars for it. so two thousand dollar purchase on this uh, but you can see right here uh, just a few hours into the morning session I was able to sell that for eighty three dollars so bought it for forty one sold it for eighty three more than my the, the good news I doubled my money I more than doubled my money put about two thousand dollars in here brought uh, twenty one hundred dollar profit in off of that bad news it was two thousand dollars yeah it would have it would have been a million dollars that'd be awesome right but it still doubled my money on that very rare directional position that I put in. Uh, and then last but not least, our SPX trades, we started uh, the morning right here. You know, we looked about one hour into the morning, we put in a call leg, uh, and then about uh, two hours later, we put in our put leg, and then we put in another call leg, and then we put in another put leg. Some total of all of this was, I ended up with about $5,000 on the day into the SPX trade, uh, brought in uh, about uh, $450 on the, on the trade, 444, 445 obviously. Um, so not quite a 10% uh, rate of return, but pretty darn close. So overall guys, a really, really good day for us. Doubled my money on one position, almost 10% return on another, and the W trade continue to work in for us. Okay, so there's your first trade. I'll lock that in. I'll put that in the uh, trade tab. We're getting too many channels now. I can't even keep track of our channels. First trade of the day. Well, it's not the first trade of the day, right? So Alex, I, I, I forget how you want me to get you that information. I think it was like a $2,100 profit on the E-mini trade. 
uh, with $2,000 cost. DM me on that, how you want me to get you stuff. I'll, I'll keep track of the capital, 2K into the trade. And 2100 back. If I could do that on all the trades, it would be awesome, right? It would be amazing. Just with more than $2,000. Okay. So we're in, uh, you know, got a couple of positions working now. Got the SPX position working. Um, I think cash on cash return. That should be a decent trade. Uh, we'll see, you know, we, you never know. We might still have the ability here uh, to get a put leg in. It's going to be later in the day, I will tell you that right now, guys. Um, it's not going to be in the next hour. We're going to we're going to wait a little bit later in the day. Again, we have that uh, flexibility. We have the uh, the luxury of having this high IV, so we don't need to get stuff in right up front. We could wait, you know, until the last hour of trading, for that matter. Again, uh, just remember, I always forget to say this, guys. If you are under twenty-five thousand value, you're trading the E minis trade the same deltas, right? Uh, so the delta on this uh, was, a, well now it's a six. It's a six delta now. I think it was a, a nine or a ten delta if I remember right. Um, <clears throat> but it's dropped now to a six as the market is, is continuing to retrace here. So it was pretty good that I sold that overnight E-mini. Anytime you can double your money guys, you should probably not hold out for any more, right? Uh, double, just checking back in on our W trade. That looks solid. I am interested. Uh, let's just take a look again at IV. I do have a little bit. I do have a little bit of fixation with IV as we see this progress. Now we're still sitting in the 60s, but you know, again, coming down, coming down. I, I would really anticipate here that unless something crazy happens with W. That we're down in that 50 percentile here. So it looks like most of you guys got filled for something around the same thing that I got filled on. Uh, let's see, Dino, what are you saying? Uh, yeah, Dino, I usually do that. You, you, you will usually, I, you will usually see me uh, in the chat room when I do that. I was just happened to be away from the chat room, but we usually, I don't know if you're a new member or not, um, but we usually. Anything that I'm doing, I, I will throw it in the chat room. Nice. I think 3490s on the E minis is a good uh, level. Good level. No, I mean in here, Dino. I don't know if you're new to, to in here. Because usually anything that I do in the after hours, we post. That's how it always is, though, right? The trades that you double your money on, you have $2,000 in. Uh, so just another concept or topic too. While we're waiting on our trades here, well, thanks, Boris. I, I appreciate that. I, I I really do appreciate that. Um, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to put as big an effort into this as I can. So, um, what was I going to say now? Oh. Are uh, those of you that looked at or are in the corn trade that I did? So that's an interesting question that uh, was brought up to me last night uh, by one of our European traders. And I uh, just want to chat with you guys about this a little bit too. 
in terms of what kind of trades we might want to be looking at for these Tuesday and Thursday bonus sessions. Okay, um, I just randomly picked something that I already do on Tuesdays and Thursdays, which is just to try to do a little theta scalp on um, what we've talked about, a stock that has high implied volatility, try to peel a little bit of that off on that day. Um, but we can do different trades too. And, you know, I think maybe sometimes a longer term trade is a little bit easier to manage and a little bit easier for you guys to follow, a little bit less intense. Um, that corn trade still looks amazing. Now, again, this is very similar to the trade that I just doubled my money on today, right? Just doubled my money, more than doubled my money on that e mini trade. That's the good news. Bad news is it was two thousand dollars, so you didn't get. I didn't get rich off of it. Same thing here with this corn trade. I just had a little bit of extra cash sitting around, so I put six hundred dollars. You know, it's not a not a heavy trade, uh, but that trade, that six hundred dollar trade, has the potential to bring in three hundred and fifty dollars. Now I forget when we put that on. I think maybe it's been a week or so. It's got sixteen days or so still left in that trade. But that's a real, real, real high probability trade. Um, there, there's the corn right now. We need to be, uh, I think, below, what do we need to be below? Let's look at the position. Below 425, okay? So we're a long, 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 long way. There we go. We gotta be below there. And you can see what corn has been doing. Now, this is a, obviously a five-minute chart. Let's go to a daily chart. That'll give you a little bit better interpretation of that. Uh, but we're, we're in a nice trend there. We're in a nice trend against that. And, again, that's crazy rates of return, right? Like, that's a better than a 50% rate of return in less than a month. So you guys let me know. You know, we can do any kind of trades that you really want on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It might be nice to A, throw in some trades that are a little bit non-correlated to the market. You know, corn, completely non-correlated to the marketplace. And uh, B, it's a little bit more long-term, so you don't have to stare at your screen all day long with it. Um, Ad, are you, are you asking, would I put in more calls to average of my credit on, on which trade? Okay, there's one vote for non-correlated and longer term. We're in a couple trades right now, Ad. You're talking about the W trade, you're talking about the SPX trade. Oh, so no, uh, you should be, so when you originally got in the trade, right, you figured out your position sizing. So if you're immediately now gonna come back and add into that, if that was in your position sizing, then that's fine. But if you're just throwing extra money at it that you hadn't anticipated, that's not good. So you figure out what your position sizing is. Non-correlated. I'm getting a lot of votes for non-correlated. Okay. I think too, I, I think it's nice. There we okay. It seems to be unanimous. I think it's nice too uh, to have trades that are uh, something that you don't have to stare at all day long, right? forget to record this so that we can put this up on the YouTube. Um, one of the things that I always try to share with you guys when I'm starting my day is how much capital do I have available to trade any specific trade and then kind of how I want to leg into that over the day, right? So again, that's just the real critical thing. Every, it seems like every day I get questions from you guys. Hey, should I add to this leg? Should I add to this leg? I can bring in more credit if I add to this leg. And, and it really needs to come down to, well, was that already figured into your plan for the day, right? Are you scraping up capital from other trades or other sources or un other unallocated money? Or was this money you had already set aside to trade that strategy? So don't get over allocated. But uh, again, generally speaking, you know, if I want to put $10,000 into the trade that day, I'm probably not going to start off with more than 5,000. 
Uh, because you know, you know at some point in the day, there's either going to be an adjustment that is going to take place or you're going to load up on one side or the other, right? You're going to make the puts heavier or the calls heavier to try to balance out the delta. And that usually takes me from $5,000 to maybe seven or $8,000. And then I've still got a couple thousand of dry powder to adjust or do anything if I need to later on in the day. So just make sure that, you know, when you're asking questions like, should I add to this to bring in more premium? I don't know. You have to answer that yourself in terms of how much capital you're allocating to that trade. We'll take a look at it here. Let's change this back to Delta. Yeah, so, you know, we're again, we're back up to the all-time highs of the day, right? So we're back to that 12 Delta right now. Um, you're looking at a 9 Delta. Well, I don't, I'm not sure if you're looking, oh, oh, I'm sorry, my, my, my bad. You're looking at the E-minis. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let's look at the E-minis. And you're looking at the 3500, which would be about a 10 delta now. Um, what's that price at? There's your 3500s and you're doing by, are you doing a $5 spread, a $10 spread? I'm assuming you're doing a $10 spread. Yeah, $10. That's not bad. That's an 80% probability. You're almost out to one standard deviation. We're at the all-time high of the day. And, uh, you know, it, it, let's, let me just look at, like, maybe five contracts. That's $1,800 bringing in uh, 128 after commissions. That's a great rate of return, right? Uh, NIO, here's the problem with NIO. Where's your options? So I would not touch NIO with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> it sounded like Dr. Seuss. I would not touch NIO with a 10 foot pole. Uh, you don't have any options on it. There's no options to trade on it. So we're just, just now on our SPX trade, starting to back off from the highs of the day. So just now on our SPX trade, just barely hit green, bounced back here to red just a little bit. Um, our W trade is uh, still in the green, but it's backing down. It's backing down. So we'll need to keep an eye on that here going forward. I just want to take a look, <clears throat> excuse me, I just want to take a look here real quick at some puts on the SPX. See if we've still got that same crazy premium uh, in play that was in play just a little bit ago when we put our call leg in. That's not where I wanted to go. They're still pretty big. Probably get 60 cents, 65 cents maybe for a 14 delta right now. It's a little early for me to be wanting to put that in with all of the market froth that is taking place, but uh, 
we'll watch that. That's kind of the level that I'm looking at. That'd be a one standard deviation, 14 delta. We'll keep our eyes on it. Yeah, Beverly, I don't, I don't know, I don't think maybe it's coming through well on my mic, it's, but that's what I've been saying. Everybody's like, what are you saying? What are you saying? Froth. It, it's just, it's just frothy right now. That's, that's the only way to really describe this marketplace. Yeah, the, again, Chris, we've talked about this, right? Um, the thing that scares so many people which is volatility, right? We love, uh, as, as long as we can get it in a directional nature, right? What's kind of happening today, again, I coming back to my word of the day, which is froth, but if we've got a strong directional move, the IV, the inflated IV allows us to wait, like you say, until even, even, even one and a half hour, one hour, one and a half hour before the market closed, you'll still get good premium you can still get good premium. So there is no reason to try to rush a put leg in on this trade right now. Recording what we're doing. I, I mean, I, I probably needed to get out at 100%. Um, I need my W trade to expire completely worthless. At the end of the day, it's a good trade. I put up $42,000 and I made $2,000 in what, three days? Um, four days, three days, four days, whatever it is. 5% uh, rate of return in a week, that's pretty good, right? That's an awesome rate of return. Boy, it, it, it's not what it was supposed to be though, right? It is not what it was supposed to be. Um, so that's the, that's the, that's the knocks of, of trading. And one of the things that I, I think I mentioned to you guys before, but I wanna mention this again. <clears throat> One of the things that I really, really like about trading these um, sort of scalping trades, right? Um, you're obviously using a weekly option. So it depends on what day of the week it is, Monday or Friday. But you're talking about a, at, at, at most, you're talking about a five day trade, right? Generally speaking, it's gonna be a two or a three or maybe even a one day trade. These types of trades, this W trade that we're in is highly, highly adjustable, right? Like if I had to, you know, we start the trade and we're like, okay, I only want to be in it for a few hours. And then it's like, okay, I only want to be in it for the day. And it's like, okay, well, I'll hold it overnight for one day. But then it's like, okay, well, now i got to hold it to expiration. You could roll this trade out an entire week. I mean, if you want to play around with that right now, look at your wings on W. If you rolled this trade out, an entire week, how far out you could go and how much safety you could build into that trade. And that's nice versus uh, what I see a lot of times, which is people will do, and the, the notorious one for this is iron condors. Uh, Tasty works sort of motto, what most people understand to be true and what most people use with their iron condors is 30 to 45 day expirations, right? Well, what do you do? How do you manage an iron condor when you start to get buried in it? How do you roll an iron condor that you're buried in that's a 30 or a 45 day trade? Well, now you're out, you know, now you're out 90 days. Now you're out six months. So you see this all the time with people that are doing just like maybe they're strictly doing iron condors and they're doing 30 day iron condors, but you look in their portfolio and they've got six months, they've got nine months. Their whole portfolio is chock full of six month and nine month iron condors because they had to adjust them and that was the only way that they could do, right? Is they could have to push it out so far. So when you're doing really, really short term trades like this, there, there, you know, again, there's never any guarantees, right? But there's a lot of advantages to us in a trade like this W trade. The theta erosion is so quick with such a short term trade. The IV crush helps us the ability to adjust it if we need to on time. Time is always a nice adjustment. 
a lot of people don't like do, doing that. They don't like pushing a trade out into the future, but it's a not, it can be a nice adjustment because generally speaking, it doesn't cost you any money, right? That trade yesterday where we had to roll the call leg at a loss, that cost us money to do that. And uh, if, you don't have to, if you don't have to put up any money to adjust a trade, sometimes that's very favorable. Just looking at your comments here. No, that's what I'm saying, Dave. That that's that's what I'm trying to that's that's what we're talking about here. Is that these two columns here, this is my profit and loss for the day. This is what's happening today. This is my overall profit and loss for what is open. That trade's not open anymore, right? So that's what I'm saying. That's what I keep saying over and over again here. I'm not up 68, I'm not up seven grand on this trade. I'm up seven grand on the current open positions but I'm not up seven grand on the trade. I need the rest of this $6,500. I need at least $4,500 of that. I need another $4,500 minimum of extrinsic time value erosion to get me into the profit zone overall on the overall trade. So back to what I was talking about or what I was gonna talk about here is uh, your guys' thoughts. I don't know. It's a tight race. It is a tight, tight race. It will, uh, I, I, it, you know, it's not going to be over anytime soon. Um, yeah, I think so. I think this is going to, you know, it's going to be contested. You know, it's going to be contested, right? Like whoever wins, they're going to contest. So it could be who knows it could be it could be months i don't know how that works but it's not going to be a, it's not going to be a pretty picture make sure the recording again there we go i'm going to look at uh what a roll would look like on W. Let's look at, it doesn't really matter, we can look at either one, but I just want to look at the put leg here. Yeah, there's a pretty big credit right there. You know, if you just roll out one week on that, that is a huge amount of credit. Uh, and that's not changing the strike price, right? So we could forego that credit. We could say, hey, I want to roll this out another week at just a, a break even um, and roll it down even some further legs. So that's something that we have in our back pocket. If we need to do it, we can do it. Make sure I always forget to start recording. We can look at the numbers on that. Um, I was just going to say, at the end of the day, if we don't get a put leg put in and this market remains strong like it is, you know, you sort of feel foolish. You felt like you left money on the table, right? But if I'm looking at the SPX, let me look at my numbers again on that. Let's just take a look at my numbers. Um, Got a 35 cent credit on that. Let's just replicate that order because of course you always want to calculate commissions, right? So a $2,900 a, a $2, investment bringing in about 95 bucks. Let's take a look at that. Let's see if I can pull this up here. This computer is running really slow right now. Here we go. Uh, 
that is there. With the screen capture program running, with my trading platform running, and with Zoom running, my computer barely functions. It is barely, barely functioning. But uh, 94 bucks divided by 2905. That's a 3.2% rate of return, guys. That's better than our target of 1% or 2% a day, right? So even if we don't get a put leg in here, we got to be pretty happy uh, with sort of what's playing out here right now. I just saw your post, Tom. Um, I just had a, and this is completely off topic, but I just had a niece that died of uh, a, a really aggressive cancer that hit her really hard, took her really fast. When I was young, when I was a kid, uh, you, you always heard the old timers say, well, you know, if you've got your health, you've got everything, right? And as a kid, I thought, what, how stupid is that saying? How stupid is that? You know, I want to, I want an awesome girlfriend. I want a cool car. Like these are the things that are important to me. And uh, as you get older, you learn how valuable your health is. Everything else is replaceable, guys. Everything else. You go through bankruptcy. You lose everything. Money is a replenishable commodity. Um, but man, if you lose your health, you're 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 in you're in a world of hurt. So. I'm trying at 54 years old, I'm trying to focus more on that. Um, based on some of the conversations that I had with you guys yesterday, there should be a lot of you that are in the profits now on the W trade uh, or, or nearing the profits on the W trade. I'm still not there, but if you're there, probably behooves you to start looking at booking those profits. Especially if you're up 1300 bucks, Roa. That sh shoulder, that's not too bad. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good uh, intake right there. 60% profit. Dang, I, I keep forgetting to record these things. Yeah, um, level to adjust on the calls. Um, it's not really refre reflective that we're at the high of the day, right? It's reflective of where we're at re in relationship to our strike price. And we're still quite a bit away from our strike price. So we've still got some time to look at that. I should be recording all this. The other reason that I'm trading small today is these theta scalping trades that I do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We just talked about building a business plan, right? The money that I use to do those Tuesday and Thursday trades is the money that I allocate for my zero day to expiration trades. And so I've been trading roughly about $50,000 lately in my zero day to expiration trades. Well, I've got what? I've got, uh, I got 42,000 of that money tied up in this W trade, right? So, uh, so those are the two reasons. I've got two reasons for trading light today on the SPX. Yes. Uh, you kind of want to do a, a tit for tat kind of thing when you're trading. You put on a leg and that creates a defined risk, right? The next trade ideally should counterbalance that risk. So ideally, your next trade should be a put leg to counterbalance the risk that you have in that call leg. So you just kind of you go but you've seen us do that in the last week or two where we'll bounce back and forth. Put in the call leg, then you put in the put leg, then you put in more calls, then you put in more puts, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right? But you're trying to balance out that risk. You're never always. You're never going to be perfectly delta neutral in a trade. That's just so hard. It's 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 hard to do 
it's almost impossible to maintain, but that's the goal. Try to keep that risk uh, in proportion. The, take whatever the market gives us. So uh, we'll see obviously where we're at at the end of the day today. It's sitting pretty good right now. You know, my preference, if you ask my preference, and I'd love for these options that we're in right now to go to zero extrinsic value, get my $2,000 of profit out of the trade and move on. I'd like to get my 40 plus grand back. Uh, but if we need to roll it, we need to roll it. You know, if it makes sense, it makes sense, right? Yeah, there you go. So Steve G, you got it, you know, I, I, I hit this this morning and I'll hit it again. Um, there's always exceptions to the rule. There are always trades that for whatever reason you just can't, uh, you can't work your way out of them, right? You're just going to take the loss on it. Um, but generally speaking, any trade is adjustable. Any trade is fixable if, and, and there's the big if, if you have enough dry powder to throw at it, right? So again, simple numbers, simple examples. If you have 10,000 to allocate to a trade and you only allocate 1,000 and that trade goes against you, you're probably going to have a pretty good chance to adjust your way out of that uh, loss, right? You got a lot of uh, uh, of tools, you've got a lot of armaments that you can throw at that trade. If you reverse that, if you you know have ten thousand to trade and you put nine grand up front into the trade and it goes against you, well, you don't have a lot of options. You don't have a lot of flexibility left in terms of what you can do to work your way out of that loss, right? So uh, again, asset allocation and position sizing. That's really the key. Uh, Johan, you, yeah, the, the, the market is persistent. We're still 20 points away. We're still 20 points away on our calls. So I'm not going to do anything on the calls right now, but I do, I do want to look at uh, possibly some puts here. And it would be somewhere down around the 3430 level. And we'll just see if I, I'm just looking right now. That's all we're doing is we're just looking to see if it makes any sense. So I already forgot. I already forgot my number. What did I say? 3430. It coincides nicely with that 50 period moving average. And uh, it's also a one standard deviation move. 3430s, like 3420s. Oh, I got some junk loaded up here already. 3430s, 3420s. And what do I have? I've got three contracts on right now. Um, showing mid price 40 cents. I don't know that we would get that. Um, oh, nap price is like 20 cents. Again, anything above 30 cents, we need to get probably better than 30 cents on a trade to make it make sense. So mid price is 45 right now. I'm going to put this in at 40. If I did that, that would bring in another $110. I don't know if I'm going to get that filled though, but I'm going to put it in right now and I'm going to let it sit. I'm going to let it work. So. Uh, again, number wise, well, let's just go to the trade. So there's the trade right there. I'm working it at 40 cents. It's a, it's an equal trade. It's the same contracts, number of contracts that I have on the call side that I'm doing on the put side. And uh, it was the 3430s by the 3420s. Well, I feel, there we go. So I get a fill on that. And let me just come back here quickly and look at the delta on that. That was a nine delta. That was a nine delta, guys. So if you're doing the E-minis, that's a nine delta, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the trade tab.
Um, let me ask, let's see here. Okay, so I got that in, locked in. Um, Jan, today, let's see, today is only more of an education trade for you, right? Making 5K on those zero date expiration trades normally. It's never about the dollars, it's about the percentage, Jan. It's about the percentage. You're gonna work, you're gonna trade with whatever capital you have available, right? So, hold on just a second. Um, you're gonna trade with whatever capital that you have, but if we talk, rather than talking dollars and cents, we talk percentages, now everybody talks the same language, right? So whether you're trading $1,000 or a $1 million, you can compare each other's results side by side because you're talking percentages. What are our percentages here on this trade? Well, on my SPX trade, I've got $3,000 tied up in this with a credit of about $200. So, uh, I don't know what that is. Two hundred divided by three thousand. That's a six percent return potential for the day. So that's huge. This is about trading well and trading whatever capital that you have. I just went through this where I explained this that my fifty k that I have generally proportioned for these zero date expiration trades, 42,000 of it is uh, in the W trade, right? Uh, musky guy, the, were, were they nines? Let's go back to the SP. I think there was a nine delta. That's my bad, I forgot to put that in on the trading stamp. I think it was a 9 delta at the time. It's like a 10 delta now. There you go. Thanks, Reggie. There we go. Um, we are approaching the uh, 11 o'clock hour time, mountain time, my time. Three hours left in the trading day. I uh, feel pretty good about our call leg. Uh, oh boy, we did some puts already. So check the uh, trade input tab. We already put in some puts uh, in the trade, um, but we're getting that. We're getting, you know, W is just kind of holding its own. I wish it would go up a little bit, uh, but it's 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 in there. It's holding its own. Um, I it's going to need to do something amazing um, to be able to get for at least for me. It's going to be have to do something amazing for me to get out at a profit of the W trade uh, before the end of today's market. Uh, SPX trades looking great, looking great. It's at uh, 170 right now. Let's take a look at um, again the the IV that is just so compelling to watch, right? So, you know, I mean, there you go. Stuff's working, right? It's working in our direction. Um, we're down into the 50s. We're down into the 50 percentile. And uh, we could be down into the 40s tomorrow. So everything's working for us in this trade. Uh, it's just obviously a lot slower than we would have hoped for. A lot slower. Hey guys, just uh, checking back in. It is a little bit before noon my time, so uh, we've got we've got for our trading session for our intents and purposes, we've got less than two hours uh, to go in the trading day. And again, not a, a ton of activity here in our two main positions. Um, SPX is really really well positioned right now, and uh, again, you know. 
we have to distinguish. We have to distinguish between uh, our emotions and logic, right? And um, so it maybe seemed a little counterintuitive um, to enter the SPX trade today on the call leg first, but we we you, you you can only have so much of an overextension, and that's what we got this morning was an overextension. Now that doesn't mean that we can't still run. My goodness, man, the Nasdaq is still up 500 points, which is just insane. Um, we're still up 100 points, obviously, on the SPX, uh, but it, the risk reward ratio is just so much better, and we were still, uh, I think, 25, 30 points away at the height of the day. So. It, it made sense. Uh, we are sitting right now. You can see that, man. We are sitting right there at uh, what has been a very important support resistance level all day long. So it'll be interesting here to see if we just kind of hang out uh, at this current level. But right now, really, really well positioned uh, in our iron condor on SPX. Um, W is is lower than I would like it. You know, again, it depends on if guys, if you did not, if you were part of that group that did not roll up your call leg, you're you're probably way to the profit side right now, right? So make sure that you're exiting that trade out to get your capital back to uh, go do Wednesday's trade, or excuse me, Thursday's trade, tomorrow's trade, the bonus trade. Um, I still need some time, so. I am probably again. We're, you know, we're two hours out from the market close, so anything can happen. Uh, but I'm probably going to need to sit in my W trade overnight once again. At least that's the way it's looking right now, right? So not a lot happening right now, guys. I just thought I would check in and uh, update with you. Uh, rolling the rolling the call exam. So we're at the 300 level right now. Uh, that might start making some sense here. I, I haven't even looked at that to be honest, Baggins. And so you'd have to look at that and see uh, what kind of premium you could get. You don't have a lot of room. You know, there's not a lot of room to roll that down. Look at uh, if we look at W on a chart. Let's see. Let's see if I can get these to expand here. Uh, almost six bucks. The ATR, oh, I'm sorry, we're looking at SPX here. Let's look at W. Helps if we look at the right stock, right? Um, so the ATR on it has come way down. It's a lot lower than what it was. It's only a couple bucks here. So yeah, you might you might be able to bring that down, but you don't have a lot of room. There's got to be enough premium to justify it, right? Uh, Chris, you should be. I can't. Am I, who am I talking to? Is it Scott or Chris? I think it's Chris. Chris, I I think if you have, don't have the puts in, you should be really profitable, right? If you're profitable, take your profits. Uh, with, with no adjustments. And if we could get out of this trade at no adjustments, again, that's uh, bringing in $200 premium on a $3,000 investment for me. 6.6% .6 return potential. So on a day that is absolutely a crazy bonkers day, uh, we could have a home run trade for us here. Uh, again, knock on wood, we've got two hours to go. I keep forgetting to record. Uh, getting into this trading journal where we can record every little nitty gritty detail of our trades, you know, the emotions in the trade and all that kind of stuff. And you have to have that. Tony Robbins calls it sensory acuity, which is just a real fancy way of saying 2020 hindsight, right? Being able to look at past decisions that you have made. And the concept or the idea of this, of sensory acuity, is that, look, we're all human. And so we all make mistakes. None of us is perfect, right? And the key, though, with that is to, number one, admit that we're going to make mistakes. Um, it's crazy to me when you still see somebody say something like, wait a minute, but so I lost money on that trade? Like, in their mind, they 
conceive of a strategy, solution, approach to the marketplace that guarantees them never to have a loss, right? And it's like, uh, no, that's not how it works. We're all imperfect and things are not always going to work out. But hopefully as we're going forward as traders, going forward as human beings, the mistakes that we are making are fewer and fewer between and they are smaller and smaller in gravity, right? And so as I look back at my W trade uh, from a couple days ago now, um, I think, you know, well, why did you guys get so much better fills than I did? Some of you were, had better patience. Some of you were way more patient on getting those fills. And you have to be able to sit there and go, listen, I may not get into this trade today, right? I may not leg into this trade, but I'm not going to chase it. I'm not going to chase the price down uh, or up or what have you. So patience is one thing. Um, but yeah, we've got to analyze our trades. That's, I guess, the point that I'm making is we've got to, we've got to look at what we're doing. Today looks to be a really solid, technically speaking, day. I think that we really, um, you know, you, ha you have to be flexible. Some of you, again, have asked, and, and, and every day someone asks this, you know, well, what about this trading strategy? What about this? What about that? And we need to sort of, again, be trading uh, agnostically. Like, we just need to look at the marketplace and say, listen, I've got this tremendous bag of tools. I've got all kinds of different strategies that I can throw at this. Uh, and, and, and with regards to that, a little bit of a tangent to that is some of you asking about, well, you know, why don't we do a zero data expiration on the NDX? Why don't we use the NASDAQ? And guys, in certain cases, it is way better. Generally speaking, it's tougher. It's tougher to trade the NASDAQ than the SPX. But you know what trends more? What trends more, the, the, the NASDAQ or the, or the S&P 500? It's the NASDAQ, right? And as those t uh, tech giants go, as the, the FANG stocks go, the, uh, the, the Facebook and the Amazon and the Netflix and the Googles and the Microsofts and all of those different companies, as they go, so goes the whole entire NASDAQ. And so sometimes we can get very good trending trades with the NDX. And so we need to be flexible. We need to look at kind of things like that. And being able to look back at your past trades, that certainly helps. Okay, guys, so we are we are sliding a little bit, not too much, but we're sliding a little bit on the SPX. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple call legs to this trade. So I'm going to sell the 3485s and buy the 34.95 back. Two contracts, so not quite the same amount that I already have. Now, I'm not doubling up, but uh, pretty close. And right now, that's around 75 cents. That would bring in another $142 for me. It doesn't look like I'm even close on price there. Drop it down just a little bit here to 70. And I might let that sit for just a moment here. I am showing, I am sharing my screen, Joey. try 60 cents uh, let's see on the Delta oh, I get the 70 it fills at 70 that was a 10 Delta that's a 10 Delta so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the trade tab
Yeah, for once it looks like I got a better fill or as good a fill as you guys. I've been getting killed on my fills on this thing. Uh, so I'm now in, the trade's starting to get juicy now, guys. I'm in a five grand total capital committed on the trade. That was about my upper limit of what I wanted to commit today on this trade, uh, bringing in over $300 of extrinsic value on that. The record. Um, what I say, Lenny, is that you, you accomplished basically the same thing that we did by rolling down your original call legs to pretty much where we're at right now. Um, I like the legging in like this simply because if you look at the risk profile there, I really like that sort of stair step down on the risk profile. Uh, and, and, and it allows us, you know, we can get, how far could we get into this, uh, this uh, 3480, um, the 3485, which were short, how far could we get in on that? You could get in almost a buck, right? You could get in all the way to 3486, still be profitable on the day if it expired there. But yeah, you, you, you essentially did the same thing. Let's take a look at adding those, those puts now. We're far enough into the session here. Uh, it would be essentially, guys, the same puts. So we don't really want to go beyond a 10 delta uh, at this point in our day. And uh, I've got two more, right, that I can add to balance that out. That would bring in $90. And so if I look at adding those, again, go ahead and throw those on there. Uh, 45 cents is what I'm working on right now. It looks close on that. Again, for those of you that are just looking at it now, again, it's the same strikes that we have on the put side. It is a 10 delta if you're working the ES. And I might have to drop that. Uh, I'm going to try five cents down. I'm going to try the 40 cent fill. I get the 40. Okay, Fred, you got it at 45 again. You, I don't know. You guys are just getting better fills than me today. Uh, but I did get that at 45, or I got it at 40 rather. And now, if you look at the analyses tab, that's kind of what it looks like right now. So not too shabby, not too shabby going into maybe the last 40 minutes or so that we want to trade this, right? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that into the trade tab, put that activity in there. Take a look at it here. Yeah, the SPX is starting to amount to something for me here. Still at that $5,000 capital level on there, 
but I brought in over $400 in premium on that trade. So now we're starting to get into some really big rate of returns. And, uh, you know, again, we're not that far out um, that we may not even need to do another adjustment here. That would be nice if we could get 100% capture. I don't know if we could get 100% capture, but, but we'll see. We record this. Uh, again, we're at uh, 28 minutes, 28 minutes to go, and it is just not wanting to give it up. Uh, bouncing right there in and out of uh, profit and loss, profit and loss still with 28 minutes to go. So we're going to continue to watch it. It's sliding, it keeps sliding, but we're still well within our range here. Uh, our W trade is uh, hanging in there. It could do a little bit better, obviously. Going to be. I, I looked at the W trade here just a little bit earlier, uh, in terms of rolling that. Uh, you know, it's working. It's getting there. I'm bouncing in and out of profit right now today. This will go green, then I'll go red, then it'll go green, then I'll go red. But it, the the theta is working. The IV crush is still working. It's still working. I could uh, adjust this down to the 250 level. Uh, if I rolled this out one week, I could go to 250. So there's a lot of room to still work with on the W trade. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. This SPX trade, it just does not want to give up the ghost here. Let me put this back into the graph analyses. Whoops, I'm on, I'm on the wrong thing. I'm going to get SPX up here. There we go. We could look at it in the, in the risk curve too. It might be a little cleaner at this point. So we'll just watch this here go on into the close, guys. We don't have too much time left. Uh, are you profitable yet? If you're in the E-minis, are you profitable yet? Because obviously we want to get you closed out prior to the market closing, right? Abe, how far off are you? Okay, so we're getting close, we're getting close. Well, Stan, you want to look at the trade as a whole. So you have to look at your overall position. That may, that may sometimes result in closing one trade at a loss. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking in your, is your overall position profitable? So my W trade again, it, you know, it's been bouncing all over the place here, but it's showing me up a couple grand on the day, which is great. But I need at least 5,000 more of theta on that to get me into the overall green. So I will be holding that overnight uh, with the comfort knowing that I could adjust this down to 250 if I needed to and uh, not do it at a debit, not cost me any money to do that. It's always nice when the EES uh, traders, when the E-mini traders can get out early and not have to worry about uh, the close. You, you, Bobby, you know, you know the deal. You've been around the block a few times. Futures are tough. Futures are tough. I, I think you mentioned it, Beverly. I think you mentioned a couple of times that you're enjoying yourself. I am, I'm thrilled that you guys are here. I, I'm thrilled that we're building this team together. This is awesome.
Profit is profit, no boy. Profit is profit. We're down under the uh, two minute mark. So I just kind of want to see where I'm sitting. W is uh, W's working. W is working. It is, it is a slow, slow battle here. But uh, brought in another 60, well, 2,000. Whatever it ends up being, this thing's bouncing all over the place. But up $2,000 today. Still got 6,000 of theta sitting out there that I need to work through. Up 2,400 now. Our SPX trade, uh, I, I don't really have hardly anything left in that. We've got uh, one minute, five seconds left. Take that into the close here. Let's see. Fred, that's awesome. Did, you you might have done different stuff than me. 14, Daryl, 14%. That's crazy. 9%. P. Joe, you guys are doing way better than I am. Do you guys have a program I can subscribe to? Because you guys are killing me. Twenty seconds and we're done. Nice, Scott. Dino, you you killed it, Dino. Yeah, your patience paid off, Smart Homes. Well, there we go, guys. There we go. Quick little wrap on the day. I obviously I'm videoing our session today. I'll get it loaded up on Facebook for a review later. But uh, you know, the three trades that I was looking at today was uh, my long call made two grand on that. That was a double. Uh, the SPX trade made uh, six percent. Well, made more than that, right? Made four hundred. I made four hundred dollars on five thousand. So whatever that is, uh, we're profitable on the W trade, so that's moving in the right direction. So overall, guys, it was a good day.